Hello everyone, and welcome back to another uh, video on my channel. Uh, today we'll be discussing Vagabond, a, um, another Seinen series, a blind review of the Seinen series. Uh, this time we're going to be doing a big chunk of the series, volume 2 through 8. Um, and so I kind of left off before um, me and Misashi actually faced off against the, the invincible swordsman, um, to put it lightly. Um, so first off, the world around them is really, really pretty. Um, you know, the fabric, the style, you know, I think it's one of the better looking, uh, areas that, you know, you could focus on, you know, because before we were just in a village and, you know, it was very limited to that, um, for that first volume. So in volume two, uh, this time, you know, we have some wise words from, the monk where we left off and uh he like ties you know the whole, the whole village ties him up you know and he kind of tells him like what, what kind of man do you want to be you know what, what kind do you want to what kind of person do you want to be and he keeps using otsudu like like he, he like i love how he like relates this woman to like his struggle and like he hits him over the head with this branch and he's like He's like, it's a good thing that was rotten, otherwise you would be dead right now. And he's like, well, I, I mean, I guess. And he's like, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world to be distracted by a woman. So that was pretty cool. And uh, definitely leads credence to this man being like this first step in enlightenment. It's interesting how a lot of his teachers end up being bald and having this layer of enlightenment to them. Uh, it's another element that makes him a very human character, right? Um, you know, being able to be this powerful swordsman and, and having to struggle to achieve this invincibility thing that he wants to be the most invincible man and, and, and to be this man and, you know, on, on the top of the top of the mountain and in the sun kind of thing is, um, I wouldn't say his goal is very relatable. Um, but his motivations of being just like waking up in the morning and being like, well, if they try to kill me, I'm going to have to kill them. You know, that mentality, oh, while it is barbaric, uh, is very relatable in the sense that, yeah, you know, if you give people an inch, they will give you, a, you know, they will get right in there and you'll be screwed, you know, in some cases anyways. So I think he's a pretty relatable, relaxed, you know, he's not fighting, you know, he's gotten this perception of being this demon child when... It's just not really the case. Um, and so re really, you know, briefly on these, you know, characters, uh, Ot Otsu, Otsuyu, um, I don't actually know how to say her name that well, uh, but she is the main woman. Uh, she was kind of staying there for a while in the village because, you know, she was waiting for, um, sorry, the name changes are kind of a little bit confusing, especially my notes, because I, uh, but the original name change was, uh, uh, Matachi, I think. Uh, yeah, so he, he was the original guy that she was staying in the village for. Um, you know, she had this whole life with him. Um, but what I, I love the dynamic that we were getting between Takazo and Matachi uh, is that, you know, Matachi, he's the one that chose Otsu. You know, this woman that was young, you know, from, from childhood, and he was going to marry, you know, he married her, or, or he was going to, all that. And, well, and on the other hand, you know, he's kind of almost jealous, as we see later on in, like, towards volume 8, where we get to really see um, the creator of the series really get to stretch his muscles with creating these dynamics between these two characters. Osuru is actually the one that chooses... Uh, um, Takazu, which is another uh, dynamic between these two characters. So I just love how she is this kind of in this love triangle and she is a point of interest for both um, of our samurai that we are following. Um, you know, Takazu is this really cool character. I'm going to refer to him as Takazu for now because we'll get into the name change a little bit later. But he is a really wild, rambunctious demon. Uh, he he's somebody that you can follow um very well I, I i when i used to fence i fought like this guy you know he has very similarities to the characters like guts and Kenpachi when he fights 
you know, but it's, instead of it being more out of just, like, either, like, in Kampanche's case, it's more of, he wants that blood loss, he wants that battle, you know, he has that instinct, he wants, because, you know, no one's really that powerful against him, you know, Guts, his case, you know, he's doing it more because he's always struggling, and he's trying to do the right thing, and it's this inner turmoil, right? Well, Takazo, it is such a simplistic view, it's the same reason why I like Ichigo so much, is that the reason that he's doing the things that he's doing is because it's survival of the fittest. He has to do it. You know, these people are coming for him. He's not going to just kill anyone, you know, but if people are coming for him, right? Uh, you know, in his, in his battle with the um, famed Hanzo Temple, you know, ha Hanzo Temple, um, you know, we see him seek out this man, but when he actually thought he killed him, he was, like, kind of disappointed. Like, well, I, that's not really what I seeked out to do. I saw, I seeked out to actually be a stronger person. As he explains to yet another bald teacher who says a lot of wise words about him being a bloodthirsty, uh, you know, demon just coming into the village wanting to fight, and he's like, you know, I have a lot to learn. There's these levels of maturity that just make him a very human character. It just is really a joy uh, to read. Um, you know, and I, I just think his whole fight with with this spearman, you know, he reminded me so much of Ikaku from Bleach. I think Ikaku definitely took uh, creative liberties from this man, um, except that this man's actually wise. <laughs> His fight with them was really, really great, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but, you know, another character of interest was definitely, um, uh, you know, a character that we later see. Um, you know, he kind of takes this, this mantle of this guy, you know, after he gets an arrow in him, and, you know, he kind of betrays him when he was supposed to actually be, um, you know, in this kind of work, um, you know, indentured slave thing. You know, Matachi, you know, as being this, this, you know, opposing force to Takazo, you know, the difference between these two people is that he's a drunk and slob, you know, he's, he's this, this man that while Takazo is fighting everyone just to have a name recognition, you know, and to actually fight for, for no reason, but just the name on your back and to actually have a legacy, this man's getting freaking drunk and accidentally starting a fire. I love it. Uh, he's a liar, he's a thief, he's dishonest. This is how he gets his scroll of, like, uh, you know, really um, uh, great swordsman when he's really not, and he teaches people. He even grows this, like, ridiculous goatee. He's just a complete package of, of trickery, and it's just a really nice contrast to Takazu that's, like, completely the opposite. He's not cunning. You know, he might be clever, but that's pretty much as far as that goes. Um, the dynamic between the two is really fascinating stuff, and uh, especially in a seinen atmosphere where we get to see adult themes, you know, sex, brutal murder. I mean, this is this is as good as it's going to get, right? Um, you know, and again, with the Otsudo example, with, like, being able to actually have the different, you know, she chose Takazo while, you know... <laughs> uh, Matachi actually chose her. Um, I, th I thought that was really a little brilliant, like little small detail. And then also the name change, like this man stole someone's identity. And he, he kind of felt bad at it in the beginning. And then he's like, no, 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 I'm this guy. Even though he barely got away with like such a crappy swordsman fight. <laughs> While Takazo was just fighting with a wooden sword. And he changes his name because he wants to actually create a legacy and create a myth and be able to live in the sun of this, you know, this metaphorical sun of being the invincible swordsman. So very different approaches to these different things. And I think they're going to end up fighting for sure. Uh, you know, another huge thing in this series is fights, obviously. And boy, is there a lot of them. There are these just raw, unadulterated, um, un, you know, just violent savage you know fights that just you know we well one one week one chapter we'll see this guy get you know his shoulder just 
like broken and we actually get to see like an x-ray of it and it just looks messed up you know and this man's just using like a piece of wood basically so he hits people over the head and we get like blood force traumas and and you know he's hitting people <laughs> and you know he has these imaginary fights you know where he's like whoa wait if i do this i'll get killed instantly we see the spear go through him you know there's a lot of combat going in here um i love 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 his fight um with the the second generation hanzo temple spear uh guy i honestly can't remember his name right now but he was he was incredible he was an incredible man uh, his fight with them, he was just, like, schooling this guy with, like, basically, like, a broomstick. Uh, reminded me of Spike from, you know, Cowboy Bebop in that movie where he's just doing so much with so little. Um, you know, not to say a spear isn't a good weapon, but he didn't even have it. He he didn't have even a blade on it, and he was just doing so well. Uh, <laughs> you know, really, really cool stuff. Um, definitely my, a highlight fight. And then also, when he's fighting all these samurai while this building is burning to the ground excellent stuff that's like some top-notch theater climactic things things burning down he's still fighting these guys um there's a, there's that kid that's also really young uh that's the leader of this high class house of samurai fighters and i wonder if uh, takazo uh, will ever fight him um, I hope he does. Uh, there seems to be some setup there, so hopefully that gets addressed in the near future. Um, but sometimes what I like about the fights is that there's this level of class, this like, you know, walking back and forth, you know, like stalk, st stalking someone, you know, this kind of like looking, and there's this great uh shot of like you know the eyes where they like match up and then the one guy will be like okay you know he tries to swing in and like there will be like a counter attack really great stuff um and especially having gore is really nice um you know because the only other series that has gore is like you know probably berserk mm -hmm. to this level um the art style again gorgeous every panel is a feast for the eyes every freaking panel is just mind-blowing uh the detail in the eyes and especially otsu uh, i actually had a screenshot one of that picture of her looking very elegant i think she looked really good and very she's a very expressive you know we haven't talked too much about her but um she's lived a very shuttered life you know she was also um left on the doorstep of this thing of this temple uh, you know, she's, she's really a wonderful woman. You know, she's, she's what you would call, uh, somebody that you'd want to wife up, realistically. Um, she's really, a, a different kind of woman. An actual woman, you know, compared to Shonen Jump, where oftentimes we don't even get women. Um, and another thing I, I really like, uh, it, the last point I wanted to make is the human element you know, with this talk is like i said before you know just reiterating that point of him just being very relatable very lazy at times very you know animalistic um very you know ingrained and in just kind of your mind is just being this kind of guy that you'd want to share a, a a drink with um but there's this dialogue the struggle the you know where he's just there's just very expressions without words you know and he's talking to, you know, dogs, and, you know, he's like, I can't, I can't feed you, I don't have scraps today, you know, he's just practicing his swordsmanship over and over and over, you know, stuff like that, and he's like, should I live, should I even be allowed to live, like, he's questioning his humanity, he's questioning who he is, his place in the world, and I just love that kind of stuff, because we constantly get it, but without this bigger struggle, right, um, it's, it's just such a simple yet effective uh, manner of writing a character. And I think he's a captivating protagonist, and uh, I really can't wait to see more of what this series has to offer. So again, uh, if you liked anything that I had to say today, uh, you, or you want to discuss it, comment below, and uh, subscribe for more analytical videos and blind uh, reviews. And I'll see you guys until next time. Bye.